When it's time to choose a carpenter in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you can have up to three options to choose from. This one right here, if you choose it, it will have the special feature of if you talk to people in the pub-like area, they'll tell you about things like number of times rifled through a dresser, or this is how many hours and minutes you've spent playing the game. If you decide to go with the treehouse carpenter instead, you'll have access to a minigame where you'll be able to put these tolans that are laying around the world map to good use. You can get access to some pretty okay weaponry early on if you choose this one. Last, but definitely not least, is this plain old regular house style. However, you'll have access to the cooking feature, which makes it so you're able to cook permanent stat boosting items. So if you want to break Breath of Fire 2 into little bitty bits, you're going to want to get the carpenter that allows you to cook. And now you're cooking with gas. I'm not sure what I find more surprising. The fact that there's more than one character named Poo in Super Nintendo JRPGs, or that Earthbound wasn't the first one. In any case, if you want to recruit this Poo here into your town and make him a tenant of yours, you have to go into the second floor of the Corsair pub and speak to Poo right here, who will be elated to find out he can actually live somewhere. But if you do recruit him, Poo will take up residence in House 1, which will prevent you from recruiting anyone else that would normally take House 1. The benefit to recruiting Poo is, is occasionally throughout the game when you visit him, he might actually give you a moon drop, which is a full heal revive and status cure for everybody. Not too bad. Looks like this choice wasn't just a pile of crap. If you venture back to your hometown of, well, hometown, in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, and go to the main character's next door neighbor and speak with them, Heckler, who is not actually someone who will be in your audience if you're doing a stand-up routine, will actually want to open a weapon shop if you decide to recruit him as a tenant. Heckler will open up an armory in House 1. But if you do opt to get him as soon as possible, he does actually offer some pretty decent stuff, if you see here. So it's up to you if you think you need to use him just yet. But if you wait a little bit longer in the game, you'll get much better armor. Or you can recruit him just for the heckler. If you go to the town of Gunts, in, <laughs> in the weapon shop, in the town of Gunts, in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo. Yes, that's actually the name of this town. It's Gunts. But what I want to draw your attention to today is, is this corner right here. In the back. And it turns out there's someone just hiding back here. So if you recruit back back to your town, when you take back back to your t <laughs> when you take back back to your town, he'll take up house one. But he will make your armor stronger, and it won't last very long. It only lasts one battle, and he raises your defense by four points, which isn't a lot of points. You can do that for each individual party member if you put them in the lead. So you could have party members waiting in the wings with four extra defense for one battle, but it's not even worth the effort. It's not even worth the effort to bring back back. There's even a tenant waiting for you at the circus in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo. However, if you do want to recruit them, make sure you do so as soon as you are able to visit Tunlin, right when you get access to sea travel. Alright, just talk to this old fart knocker in the corner named Watts and he'll join your town. However, when he joins your town, this is what he does. What's Watts' deal is, is he'll take up House 1 in your town, and then he'll ask you a series of riddles, which sounds completely useless, however. If you work through all of his riddles, he'll eventually ask you one that is really hard. Where is the legendary magician? To which the correct answer is hometown. This is the actual in-game hint to where you would find Blue, should you stumble across their place in the desert. So once you know that, Watts is pretty useless. But until you know that, he's like one of the best tenants. Watts are the chances. Should you venture to the second floor of St. Eva's Church in the town of Corsair in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you can speak to this lady named Kay who would love nothing more than open a hospital in your town. So if you decide to take her up on her offer, Kay will take up residency in House 1 in your town if you elect to take her along. After she thanks you for giving you a room, she's going to give you a vaccine shot. But what this will do is it will protect you from poison for a while. But what does a while mean? Well, from the best that I can put together, it lasts for the first battle you get into after getting the vaccine. I'm sure there's probably one instance 
where this would be useful, but I cannot think of one time in this game where being immune to poison for the first fight you get into, this being at all useful. Do you ever use K in your playthroughs? On the off chance that you do, let me know in the comments. If you make your way to the beach that's just west of Whale Cape in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you can recruit this gentleman right here named McLean. He's looking for a good fishing spot and wants to know if there's a town that lives close to the ocean. Fortunately for him, you do have one. So if you do recruit him, this is what happens. If recruited, McLean will claim House 2 in your town. And for giving him this house, he'll take you to his secret fishing spot as a token of his appreciation. And once you're taken to the secret fishing spot, if you check it out, you'll see that it's just loaded with snappers and pile worms. Snappers are the equivalent of a heal spell, whereas the pile worms are the equivalent of a cure for spell. Lots of free healing and easy access to these ingredients. All in all, not a bad choice for house two. Do you want to win in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo? Well, if you go back to the Joker Gang's cave and go into this room here, you can recruit Win for yourself. If you do recruit Win and let him go to your town, this is what he can do for you. When Win went to your town, he just happened to decide to live in house two. And if you talk to him here, he'll ask you if you want to change the window color, and he doesn't mean the house windows, he means your text windows. And I don't know how he's able to do fourth dimensional magic such as this, but Win can do that for you. So if you want to change the color of the windows in Breath of Fire 2, it's a win-win-win. If you just have to have a shop in every house in your town in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, if you go to Capitan and go to the top floor in the inn, you can corner this old man here, and his name is Lemiton, and he'll ask you if he can open a store in your town. And if you say yes, this is the kind of store that he opens in your town. When you're letting in Lemonton into your town, he'll take up house two. And if you go into his shop, you'll see he has a little bit of equipment. It's actually not too bad. We've unlocked sea travel and we still have upgrades here. I also have to point out that I can't help but feel that they're trying to reference, like, Remington Blades with this guy's name, but that's Breath of Fire 2's translation for you. If you make your way to Show Cave in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you know, Show Cave... It's that cave at the start of the game where the main character gets torn into little pieces by that scary monster. That place. But if you come back here and look around, you can find this old man in here named Bokton. And he's talking about training, and he wants to open a dojo in your town, so what could possibly go wrong with that, right? After you've brought in Bokton, he'll take up house two in your town. And if you talk to him, he'll welcome you to his dojo, and then he'll ask you what he thinks of it and tells you that you should train too. Yes, this guy promises you a dojo, but he's actually a completely useless tenant. What a disappointment. They could have had something here where you could have fought other enemies for prizes. Instead, you get nothing. Makes me wonder if there was cut content, but they were boxed in by time constraints. In Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you're expected to go to this tomb at some point during the game. And if you do, there is in fact a tenant here for you to recruit. This guy right up here in the corner. His name is Pachiri, and he traveled here to test his thievery skills, but found out that he's not suited to be a thief. But he would like to settle down and find a nice, quiet, unassuming village. So do you want to let him live there? Yeah, sure, what could possibly go wrong? Pachiri will be cheery that you gave him house too in your town, and he will thank you for giving you this house, and will assure you that he really has washed his hands of stealing. Once you've recruited Pachiri and taken the evidence from the tomb, after you talk to him, if you go to any banker and take a look at your bank account, you'll notice that your bank account is empty. If you go back to the town and confront Pachiri, he'll tell you that he doesn't know anything about your money, and the Dragon Tear does ring positively, so you do know that you can in fact trust him, because the Dragon Tear does not lie. And he'll be happy that you believe him, and he will tell you that you should probably check Karn's grave one more time, which I just found out is the name of the tomb. I don't know what to make of Karn's grave, because this is Karn right here. I guess he faked his death. Anyway, if you go back to Karn's grave, just go back to where you found Pachiri to begin with. And this guy will confess to what he did, not realizing that you're the one that he stole from. And he'll be so scared that you're going to beat him up that he will explode into pieces. Kind of a neat idea for a tenant, and you do get a little bit of Breath of Fire 1 lore. Like, I didn't realize that tomb was actually Karn's grave. I think it's a neat concept, but... 
I wish we had a custom battle we had to do or something instead. Here's a quick PSA for Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo. As soon as you get the message that the main character's hideout has turned into a wonderful town, immediately go back to the town of Windia. Once you make it back to Windia, be sure to head on down to the weapon shop here and talk to this girl here on the left named Beretta. She's gonna let you know that she has a weapon shop that she wants to open. So you want to get her for sure. If you wait until much longer in the game, you don't have to wait very long in the story before you miss out on your fourth stage in her weapon shop, which offers some of the best weapons in the game. So as soon as you get that message that your town's completed, you better gun it to Beretta. If you found any of the tenants on your own in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, it's probably this fella right here, Azusa. But did you ever actually recruit him? Well, if you do, this is what he does for you. If you choose uh, Azusa, he'll take House 3 in your town. And he'll be so happy to have a house, he'll take you to a secret hunting spot. Which, if you elect to take it, has all kinds of good stuff. Look at all this meat. All kinds of free healing right here. It's too bad that he takes up House 3, though, because bread is a lock for House 3. But if you don't want her for some reason, this is a good alternative. If you make your way to the Corsair pub in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, and go all the way to the back to the bathroom, you can talk to this person here, Makati. He pays one coin per month to live in this bathroom. That's actually a pretty good rate, but I can't even pay that, so I'm going to be kicked out soon. Please give me a house. So if you recruit Makati to your town, this is what happens. If recruited, Makati will take up House 3. Pretty well all he has to say is your kindness will surely be returned someday, although there's nothing much I can give you in return. So yeah, as far as anyone knows, Makati doesn't actually do anything for your town. Although the thing is about the Breath of Fire series is these games haven't been raked over like the Final Fantasy games have, so it's very well possible he still has a purpose that we haven't discovered yet. If you have any leads on if Makati actually does anything for your town, please let us know in the comments. One of the weirdest tenants in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo can be found on this corner of the map that you need sea travel in order to access. So if you make your way into this house, you'll find that there's only a cat here. And if you talk to this cat and choose this meow in particular, you'll actually recruit this cat to your town. If you do want to recruit the cat, it'll take up house three in your town. At first, this appears to serve zero purpose whatsoever. But if you recruit the cat early enough in the game, you'll have a house full of kitties. Look at all the cats. But if you come back here with your very own cat party member, but have her shamanize with the devil shaman, she can actually talk to these cats and you can see all of their names. This one's laughing at you. And this is the main one, Aki, that you had recruited. These might be people who aren't in the credits for some reason. I'm not sure the entire story. But if you were to tell me that there was some super secret thing involved with these cats here, I'd tell you. You gotta be kidding! If you make your way to the top of the church in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you can speak to this lady here, whoopee! And she'll somehow have found out that you made a town. But she wants to go live there, so if you recruit her, this is what she can do for you. When Whoopi moves into your town, she'll take up House 3. And what she'll do, she'll give you a general hint about the next plot point of the game. Red is the clear choice for House 3, but if you want to play the game without using a walkthrough, well, you'd never find her Whoopi in the first place, so what am I saying? Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo. When you arrive to the town that's just full of children, if you go to the inn and talk to this old man, he's going to tell you that if you take him out of here, he'll teach you some magic. The dragon tear indicates that he's pure evil, so what could possibly go wrong? If you chose to take Barros, he'll take up House 4 in your town. And the catch for him to teach you magic is you need to have as little AP as possible. So for the main character, just simply use a dragon ability, that's easily accomplished. Now, here's the catch to get the best magic possible. He also wants you to have 1 HP. Just say no. But every time you go back and talk to him about the AP, say yes until he's in rainbow dragon tier form. Be sure to lower your HP down to one. This can be accomplished by either eating what is called the bait item, or you can use Rand's wake ability to revive the party member of your choosing. Bros can teach you magic up to four times. He's really not a bad recruit. You know, despite being pure evil at first. In Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, if you go back to Rand's hometown farm town, not to be confused with the hero's hometown of hometown, and go to the second floor of the inn, you can talk to this gentleman here named Garber, who is a weaponsmith, and he will join your town if you ask him to. And this is exactly what he will do. 
If garnered, Garber will take up House 4 in your town. And what he does is he will make a weapon 8 offense stronger for one battle, or so long as you don't unequip a weapon. But I think you'd be better off recruiting Barros and teaching Missile to four of your characters. If you make your way all the way to the back of the town of Guns in Breath of Fire 2 to the Super Nintendo, you can find this building where you can talk to this gentleman right here, Kara Shinikofu, who, if you don't have enough armories in your town yet, you can recruit him if you WNAT to. If you do WNAT to want to recruit Kara Shinikofu, Kara Shinikofu will care to take House 4 in your town if you choose to recruit him. But if you recruit him, he basically just sells you stuff that's inferior to what you can buy in Gunts anyway. Besides, Kara Shinikofu armory doesn't have a very good ring to it. What's the catchphrase gonna be? You can't spell skin for a haiku without Kara Shinikofu. That's Kara Shinikofu and Associates. We put the care in Kara Shinikofu. In Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, if you make your way to the town of Capitan and go to this house right here that's just next door to the inn, if you talk to this gentleman right here, you can recruit him to go to your town. You built a town, wow, that's great. Would you let me paint your town? Yes, we do have a painter. And since he is a painter, this is what he can do. And when you make your way back to your town, you'll notice that all the buildings have been painted freshly. So if you go to house four, that's where you're gonna find Locker all locked up. He'll ask you what he thinks of the color, but if you don't like it, he'll become insulted, but he will paint it again. He has a few different color schemes. I'm not sure how different they are between the carpentry styles, but if you're looking for a little pizzazz for your town, Locker is a lock for your town. Would you like a garden for your town in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo? Well, unfortunately, you can't have that, but we can put this guard in your town named L. And if you do that, this is what happens. L will wind up in House 5 in your town if you recruit him. And if you do, all he has to say is, please leave the security of this town to me. Yes, he is another completely useless tenant. Like, he should at least be at the front gate. Or standing outside of his house. No, instead he's monkeying around. In Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, once you're able to wander around Windia Castle freely, you're able to talk to this guy here named Yozo, and he wants to make a dojo in your town. Considering how lovely Brockton's dojo is, I'm sure this one's just as good, right? If you chose Yozo, he'll take up House 5 in your town. And at first it seems like he doesn't do much at all, but you will notice that the Dragon Tear does seem to be reacting to him. So if you just sit here and talk to him for quite some time, after you've talked to Yozo about 60 times, he'll tell you that his dojo will increase your magical powers. What that means is Yozo will raise one party member's AP by 16 points. I wouldn't advise giving this to the hero, it sort of negatively impacts his dragon powers. And a lot of other characters don't even really need the magic. I find giving it to Cat is the best use for it, because she can at least cast Hail once, maybe twice. And now you know about Yozo, Bozo. Heck, Eller isn't your only next door neighbor that you can recruit in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo. If you go to the very back room, you can talk to Hans here, who will also open a shop in your town if you want him to. But you're definitely gonna want him to, and I'll explain why. The keys in Hans' hands will open House 5. And if you recruit him, his item shop will have all of this stuff. A lot of it is very good for cooking. Two medicates cooked together, for instance, will give you a power food, which raises your power permanently by one. Hans, though, pretty solid choice. Once you've expanded your town in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, if you go to the Tunlin Inn, you can see someone standing right here. His name is Martin, and he'll tell you not to say a word, and to just take him to your town. And oddly enough, the, the yes-no highlighter thing is missing. You can still select no, but we're gonna select yes for now, because this is what he does. If Martin moves in, he'll move into House 5, and then he'll ask if you're planning on defeating that guy. He's convinced that you are, and he wants to help by borrowing 3,000 coins and becoming pure evil in the process. What could possibly go wrong? Let's lend him the money. So if you give Martin the money, leave, and immediately come back, you'll find this note on the floor that says, I'm going to defeat that guy. Please don't look for me. Martin. To date, it just seems like he rips you off $3,000 and you never see him again. But Breath of Fire isn't as combed over as other franchises. Do you happen to know anything additional about Martin? Does he happen to turn up anywhere else? On the off chance that you know, let us know in the comments. Still looking for recruits in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo? Well, you'll find one if you head your way up to the top floor of the Windia Inn. 
This character right here, Daye? Whoa, I can't take it anymore. Please let me open a fish store. So if you hire him, he'll open a fishmonger store in your town. He'll move into house six in your town. And at first glance, it doesn't look like anything too special. You do have this AP recovering minnow. Some of these fish are great ingredients for stat boosting items as well as to cook gold bars for practically infinite money. The fishmonger is a very good choice for house six. After upgrading your town in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, if you make your way all the way back to the jail cells in Semaphort, you can talk to this character here, Salvador, and he'll be interested in building statues in your town. So how does this work? Well, let me show you. Salvador will take up House 6 in your town. And if you put in the lead a non-fused character who isn't the main character, Salvador will become inspired, and he will borrow this party member for a fair amount of real-world time. I forget what I was saying before the jump cut, but after about 15-20 minutes, the statue will be complete. So you could fill the town with non-shamanized party member statues if you wanted. So you can have one statue per party member, but no shamanized versions. That's what they call the Statue of Limitations. Do you like jukebox options in your video games? Well, in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, if you recruit this gentleman right here in the town of Tunlin, named Sumner, unfortunately, he won't invite anyone like Shiva or Afrit to battle for you. But if you recruit him into your town, this is what he can do for you. Once you've summoned Sumner to your town, he'll take up House 6, and he'll tell you about all the great songs that he wrote. And if you talk to him here, you can listen to up to 35 Breath of Fire 2 songs. They're just 35 songs that they just felt like giving you access to. And you don't even have to do that part of the game in order to hear the music. Like this tune is one at the very end of the game. So does that mean this guy just follows us around at a camera shot? I mean, where else would the music come from? In order to even get to this hut in Breath of Fire 2 for the Super Nintendo, you have to go kind of like northeast of those woods where you had to fight Baba at the start of the game. This is where it is to reference it on the map. And in order to get here, you need to have either Sten or Jean to jump over in his frog form. But if you come here, there is actually a tenant for your town that you can recruit. Right over here, this lady, Surfy. Do you want to take a chance and give me something for safekeeping? Yeah, I do. So let's recruit her, and this is what she does if you recruit her into your town. Surfy will coast right into House 6 in your town. And in short, they open up a bank in your town. And the thought of opening up a bank for you makes them so excited and they're... What? Not sure why they put a bank tenant in such an out-of-the-place area. I don't find this too useful for the town personally, but... If you always like to have a bank teller in your town, you might be going through withdraw without her. If you want the best ending in Breath of Fire 2, be mindful of these things. First step is max out the population of your town with three tenants. Then talk to this carpenter right here so he can expand your town. Next step is to be sure to fall into this well and poke around a little bit. If you don't do this, you cannot actually expand your town. Next on our list is once you gain access to sea travel, make your way back to the town of Gunts. And then you just want to make your way all the way back to this room and just hide behind these bookshelves, which leads to a hidden staircase. Once you've come down these steps, find the person that's here. They may be hidden when you come down here. Aichichi. And if you've gone down the well, you'll be able to actually recruit her for your town. And unless you do this, you cannot get the best ending in Breath of Fire 2. There's a few more steps than that, but this is the easiest one to miss.